Hey, welcome back to another Join the Brave podcast. Today we've got Alex Marshall and Neil McLaughlin on today. How are you doing, guys? Hi, all right. Uh, obviously, not the ideal situation, but just got to keep yourself taking care and hopefully it's back to normality soon. Hi, how are you, Marshall? How's it going? Hi, uh, same as Neil. I just try to uh, keep myself busy. Try not to let the, the boredom hit too hard. And I uh, just try to get into a routine, basically. And as Neil said, hopefully this all kind of passes over soon and we're back to normality. Aye, that's that's it. Uh, how have you been missing? You've been missing the football, missing training, missing the guys, Neil? I think it's just because usually you're coming in for work, you're meeting up with your boys, got to training, obviously. It's the same. It's just a routine, not really. It's, it's a bit hard now. It's boredom hits, but hmm. it's just go back to you have to try and keep it yourself taking care of the thing, but uh, it's hard, but you just got to go on it. Ah, yeah, that's it. Right, we'll just kind of jump into it. Um, so I want to kind of find out a bit more about you first before we kind of talk about the team, but both of you were at uh, Premier League clubs when you were younger, um, so what was it like with training-wise with them when you were in the youth team? So obviously, Marsh, you, were at, you went through at Celtic and then you were at Aki's as well, and nearly you were at Park Thistle before you signed for Motherwell. What was it like, um, Marsh, you can maybe jump in first, what was it like being a youth player at Celtic and Hamilton and did you, like, did you manage to get any time in with the first team players when you were there and was it kind of a good experience for you all together? Um, I will just, overall it was obviously a good experience. Um, when I was with Celtic we obviously done a lot of kind of, a lot of training from an early age so, and you get a lot of um, obviously good coaching and stuff so Getting that early on, I think, it was definitely good for me. Um, and I, the, as I say, everyone's very kind of professional, um, which is good because it kind of sets sets kind of standards and stuff like that. And um, you kind of got to, especially when I was at Celtic, um, you got to go away to kind of tournaments and that abroad and you'd play against sort of the best teams in the world, basically, at your age group. Um, so that was obviously good. And then I was when I went to Hamilton, I was, I think, 16. Um, I signed full time there, and then I ended up the third choice goalkeeper for the first team after about six months when I was seventeen. So yeah. that was really good experience. It meant a lot of training with the first team, um, training obviously, and then I was in squads as well. Um, obviously, I wasn't there really in the bench then. I was the kind of third third choice keeper, so I was in the stands, not stripped to that, but it was still a good experience to go to all those grounds. Who was in goal at that time? It was Michael McGovern. Okay, so cool. that must really have been great for you. Aye, no, it was really good to be fair. That was the kind of year before he went to the Euros and then kind of got his move to Norwich. So he was really good for me um, learning off. Obviously, he'd been at Celtic and he was younger and he'd been to a good few clubs. So I learning off of him was excellent. I uh, really enjoyed it and he passed on a lot of, a lot of good advice to me. So no, being at those two clubs definitely um, learned a lot. Yeah, what about you, Neely? So you were at, it was, it, it's, Technically, the Thistle Weir Academy, but you are basically part of Thistle's youth team. So, what was that like being there? And you obviously got a couple of games with the Thistle uh, first team before you moved on. Just what was it like being growing up through that academy? I it was it was very good. I enjoyed it every, every year I was there. Uh, met a good a lot of good people as well. Um, it's good run as well. It's very professional and uh, it's, it's enjoyable. Aye. It's hmm. good, obviously, when I started kind of not breaking through because I didn't play a lot I mean it was just like kind of getting involved with first team like on the bench even just in the squad it's, it's a good experience and aye, it's definitely something we'll remember I. Uh, who is the kind of players you looked up to and maybe the, the first team at Park Thistle that you kind of wanted to maybe you, did you learn anything from anyone like that did you get when you were, were training with the first team at times I well you, just training with them like, you just kind of Naturally, like take up their wee, their wee habits, if you get what I mean, like just watch them kind of. Uh, I think Chris Dillon was good because right. he used to take your side and speak to you and that. Uh, Chris Erskine was also good as well because he played similar position, obviously. Right. He was a good player, he played at good clubs, and I think he was one person that I looked up to as well. Do you think that? It's different now compared to when you, for instance, if you if you listen to all the kind of what Cy Ferry does with his podcast with players who are now retired and they were all kind of youth Celtic players and then they they kind of they were loaned out a lot and it's kind of it seems to be a kind of different way just now that if Celtic or Rangers or any other kind of Premier League kind of youth development, you either you either make it now or you you don't. Is it? Do you find it different now? 
uh, like Marsh, when you were at Hamilton, with, when you were like kind of when you said you were a third choice keeper, did you think you were going to make yeah. it? Or did you know you were, you had to go somewhere else to kind of make it? Um, I don't know. I think in the end of the day, it's sort of up to you, isn't it? Um, I think a lot of it just depends on how hard you work. At the end of the day, um, it's, it's I think it's easier to obviously break break for clubs like sort of Hamilton, where they have a good turnover of youth players mm-hmm. making first team appearances, um, whereas opposed to Celtic, where you know you're lucky if you maybe get one or two every kind of three or four years. Um, so I think it is it is a kind of a lot of dependent on what club you're at. Um, but whether you break through or not, I think you need a wee bit of luck sometimes as well with things that, like such in- injuries and suspensions and stuff like that. But I think at the end of the day, it's up to you as a person and how hard you work really and, and how much you want it. Yeah, I think it's a wee bit harder being a goalkeeper because there's only one position on the pitch that you can go for. Um, I, th- I think there's an element of that, yeah. I think goalkeepers tend to really kind of not break through into first teams until they're sort of maybe like 24, 25. Yeah. Um, so sometimes it can be hard, especially as a young goalkeeper, try to break through. But um, I suppose you just kind of need to be patient, don't you? And, and as I said, just try and work as hard as you can and see where that takes you. Yeah, what were you, Neely? What was that like for you? Um, you obviously got a chance go to go on loan. You went to still in Albion uh, when when you were at Stisco originally. So what was that a good experience for you? Did you need that? Or did you did you think you were getting some game time at Stisco that you might have went to push on more? Uh, no, I think that was probably the best thing for me mm. to just kind of actually see what it's like. You know what I mean? Like being in a, it's like, I don't know how to say it, but like a, a men's change room, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Like just experience, like, because definitely, no disrespect to development football, but you're no, it's no competitive enough. Like I, I'd wow. say, like, when you're in League Two, you're fighting for promotion or relegation, you know. Uh, but I think that was really good for me, I think. Is that kind of a big factor into the maybe players are kept in development football longer now than they used to be, and you kind of need to push for that. That kind of like you went to Stirling. Was that something you wanted to do, or was that something that you were kind of advised to do? No, I think it's something kind of both both agreed on because I knew I wasn't going to really play a lot with Fissel because mm. obviously they were playing well at the time. Obviously they were getting top six for that yeah. season, and uh, now nah, but. I think we both agreed that it would be the best thing for me. Mm. So it was, it was good. Uh, Marsh, you got a chance to go to Bowness at the time. That was a loan spell as well. Was that the kind of start of you becoming the number one keeper at the time? Um, I, I, think I, I think I was 18. To be honest, I actually kind of struggled. Um, I think as Neely kind of said, going for development football in a men's game, and playing with a team like Carlton and and Thistle, like you think that you're kind of, I was probably a bit naive, I thought I was almost just going to go there and play straight away, but that wasn't the case, I played I think the first four or five games and then I started to struggle and ended up not really playing at all over the, the course of the season, um, which to be honest gave me a bit of a reality check um, as to how good kind of, even at that level, mm. uh, the standard was and uh, kind of made me need to sort of work harder if I was going to have a chance of making it at one of the top clubs. So would, is that something both of you would kind of advise any like players who are starting to break through? Do you know you have to maybe look for that chance elsewhere if you don't think it's going to it's going to come in the first team? I think, I think you need to try playing against Ben for like younger, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I know in the development league you can play. I think when me and Neil were playing, I don't know if it's changed now, but it used to be five first team players. I think could play in it. Right. Um, but like, a lot of the game. When, you, when I was in the bonus, you won a game and there was a real kind of, like, it meant something when you won, if you know what I mean. You see, uh, when you won a like, development league, like, win the game, you just you go in, you have the high fives and that, and that bit. Um, but it's just kind of one of the main things I really enjoyed for going out and loan. But um, I definitely think it's a lot of, a lot of benefits from, from when you're younger. So we'll move on to kind of kind of last year when you were just kind of signing up with the Braves. So Neil, you were you were actually one of the first ones to sign up last year. What made you what made you want to come to the Braves? Because you were last the year before you were at Motherwell and you were released from Motherwell. So what was the, the kind of pool that the Braves got to bring you in? Uh, just kind of wanted to enjoy my football again. Uh, enjoy the way the gaffer was speaking about the club and what its aspirations and that was. It sounded good to join, and 
uh, it's it's been enjoyable. So it was a good decision. Right. Uh, has it been? Do you, have you found it all different from being at like development kind of league and the training nearly every day, things like that? Is that? Is it? Do you find it different, or are you can adjust it to it now and it's kind of natural? Oh, I'd say it's kind of adjusted to it. Uh, it's it's been obviously hard at the start getting used to like going to work and then go to train at night, but I think it's just something you've got to really gather in. It's um it's it's been actually a little covered in that as well, so it's yeah. it's been good. Do you think as a young player that you might have benefited more doing that at a younger age, maybe that kind of working and doing the kind of part time game and then working your way up that way? Or did you do you like the way you've done it? Are you quite happy the way you've done it? Do you think it's a good way to do it? Yeah, I'm I'm happy with the way I've done it. I've had good experiences these experiences at like full time clubs as well. So it's been good there. I wouldn't really change anything. Right. Mars, what were you what was your kind of pull from because you were you you ended up signing a bonus the second yeah. season you were there. So what was the kind of the move there? How did it come about? Was did the gaffer come and speak to you or um well I actually almost signed when I left Hamilton um and it was still Edu Sport Academy. Um, but I ended up signing for Bonnes, so I kind of already had a bit of contact with the Yaffa. Right. Um, and it was actually Mark Kelly who spoke to me towards the end of last season, kind of asking me if I'd be interested. And um, obviously I was. Uh, uh, kinda, and then I spoke to the Yaffa, and just as Neely said, I liked everything that he had to say. Um, he told me about the project and that, and the kind of transition into Caledonian Braves and the style of football and that. And, Kind of sold the club to me that way, so yeah, it was it was a bit of a no-brainer. To be fair, I was happy to sign. So there was no kind of obviously there was a there was no kind of something going through your head saying, "Oh, this is a brand new team." There's no like at the moment, there's no players. Where's this going to go? You don't know where it's going to go. Is it more the excitement of the project? You thought, you know what? Why do, why don't we just have this year? See how it goes. I I think so. I think with um with the the fact that there was no. Like it was completely kind of new players. It's something different as well. That like obviously I already kind of knew Mark, but apart from that, I didn't know MD. Um, so I think that almost kind of made the transition a bit easier. If you mm. know what I mean, like a dressing room where nobody really knows each other. Um, it kind of it was obviously something different, but something I really enjoyed to be honest. Yeah, like Neil, like I said, you were the you might have been the first new player to sign. For the team, see when you did sign, did the gaffer tell you that he obviously he didn't have many players signed at the time? Did that did that ever kind of go through your head? Like oh, I'm signing for a team that's got three players at the moment. Uh, what what would yeah. do? Did you not think about that? Did you just think about I'm signing for a team where I'm going to try and play first team football? Aye, that's it really. Aye. I just wanted to play, go somewhere and play and enjoy football again. Aye, but I didn't really know like there wasn't that many players I didn't sign. But I don't think that would have mattered Aye. anyway. But it's a kind of it's a it's a, it's a, it was obviously a strange kind of summer because the whole it's not even you guys yourselves were going through traditional periods of changing clubs. The whole club was changing, so it's uh, it's a weird kind of. But like Mar said, it's a kind of new experience. It's a kind of first time for everything. Um, so it's obviously a good kind of experience to have. So what what kind of what what made you think like once we got into the season? What made you think? Oh, this is kind of a. Good well, I'm kind of I'm enjoying my football here. Like Neil, you can answer this first. Like, what, what, when did it kind of hit you that we're kind of getting onto something special here at this club and it's going to be a good time? I think just like since all the way through pre-season, like hmm. the way everybody was gelled together through pre-season. Like, I know it sounds daft, but like even the night suit, like everybody goes like need the misses a night out, out and like, <laughs> they're all brilliant and all that. But just in the games and that as well, need to really like I don't know how to say like. I think we just all come together and really well. Aye, it's a bit of a togetherness in the team. Like it kind of, uh, it kind of works, and you see that from the gaffer all the way down and stuff like. That. It's always it's something that like every player's basically said, and I think that's mm-hmm. like can I credit to the gaffer for bringing in a lot of players who have managed to do that so quickly. Do you think, uh, Marsh? Do you think there's um, do you think it was made easy because it was all new players, or do you think there were certain kind of personalities in the team made it easier that way because? I find that there's not like I we, I spoke of this with Roscoe and uh, Sinky. There's not really any cliques. Like there's not kind of be groups or things like that. It's kind of a one big dressing room. Uh, I think um, I think what you're saying there. I think the gaffers obviously recruited really well. There's a good one thing I would say. There's a really good blend of kind of youth and experience. Hmm. Um, you know we we all kind of learn a lot off of the experienced boys at Sinky, every day, Roscoe and, and Wince obviously. Um, and as Neil said, I we all get we all kind of clicked pretty much the first few weeks of pre-season and that and then um, 
I think our pre-season results and that were good and I think it makes it a lot easier when you go on with each other well and outside the football as well it kind of makes it easier on the park kind of you get on well together and you want to win together on the park as well so I think it definitely helps with the on the pitch um, how they kind of how you get on off the pitch as well Aye okay, we kind of mentioned how important it was to kind of get first team experience at that age but nearly did see so becoming one of the kind of stick on first names in the team sheet like for this season because you did play the majority of the season I think you only missed maybe one or two games um, was that the most important part of your season that you wanted to come in and do and you kind of felt you achieved it uh, I definitely because I don't think especially when I've been in loan or whatever like, I think the only consistent I've played is development football so mm. not really had that spell like in men's football yeah. So I that was probably the main thing for me. I uh, just to enjoy it as well. Then yeah, Marsh, you obviously had a bit of competition with Nicky Hogarth at the start of the season, which you've said previously that it was good for you because it kinda gave you a bit of uh kinda kept you going and it kept you wanting yeah. to fight for that number one jersey and then you, end, you ended up getting it and then uh, you kinda for the end of the season that was you, you were in gold. Was that the most important part of you this season to kinda make that number one jersey your own? I I think so. Um as Neil said, you just you just want to be playing, don't you? So hmm. for me, um, I just obviously having the competition with Nicky, uh, it just kind of made you work harder. Um, and I when when that when they kind of push you to work harder, it makes you raise your game and stuff like that. So I think as well as a goalkeeper, you want to be kind of playing consistently. If you're in and out of the team, it can affect you. I think. Hmm. Um, so having that kind of consistent run of games is is important for a goalkeeper and. Um, I but I enjoyed the competition. You always kind of, always kind of want a bit of competition to keep you on your toes in that. So, I, it was definitely kind of good for me and an important part of the season as well. Right. So, like Neely mentioned there, you know, the, the togetherness of the team and uh, especially nights out. He's got any good stories of anyone? He's can, he's can, <laughs> you can, he's can say. Uh, probably the the Christmas, <laughs> the Christmas night out. Uh, right. Special no, mention. Wait. Special edge of the Craig Quinn, man. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Craig Quinn? Uh, he came, he ended up coming back with a big junk shaving at the back of his head <laughs> from, from somebody in this podcast. But honestly, <laughs> oh, right, okay. it, it was oh. Oh, no, I think one of the funniest things of that weekend is uh, Lewis Lovren. <laughs> <laughs> so Lewis was obviously one of the team at the time. What happened to Lewis? I think it was a few, a few of the boys were back at um, the apartments in <laughs> uh, we Scotland. Right. Uh, he phoned, he phoned me. He was like, "I need, I need somebody to come down and pay the taxi." <laughs> <laughs> so we were sent Lewis down, and Lewis is with no money. Money. <laughs> he shouted more in. He's, he's just stood at the side of the taxi. He's like, "What? What man? I'm the money. I'm gonna pay the taxi." <laughs> so, <honestly. laughs> Um, is it good that you could like a lot of the boys mentioned that it was especially experienced boys it was different that you all went uh, kind of, is that a different to maybe when you were at Scotland or Scotland 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 no, it was, uh, it was a good, um, did you uh, have any good experiences when you were uh, maybe Thistle or Aki's or stuff like that? Was there anything good? To, like, was, like, you obviously jumped in the first team a bit more, Marsh. Was there any, did you get going through the team at all? Um, we went to, I was actually lucky enough to go to Marbella for three right. seasons. Go to Marbella for three seasons. Um, for kind of, I think it was just a week we went for. So it was three years now I went there. And um, I don't really have any kind of stories as such, but we used to always get an which was good. And being one of the kind of players, all the, all the first team boys that kind of put money into a kitty, but we would only need to put in a euros or something. So yeah. I think the other one we got about five or six nights out in Marbella for about 50 euros. So <laughs> bad considering how expensive it is. Not to maybe kind of catch his out and with this question, because when I think about it, it's did did you think this was just going to be a year? Did you think it was just going to be a year here and it maybe be a stepping stone to push up the way, or did anything during the year make you think, you know what, I actually quite enjoy this project, see how it's going? Do you, do you reckon you could see yourself signing on next year and not having to think about it? I think I, I think so, I right? because the the. the 
what really struck me about it when I in the first kind of few weeks was how frustrating it was for like a part time club, mm-hmm. like obviously the open media type of thing and obviously the, the big online presence and stuff like that. But even even the little things like the facilities and the pitch and the balls we use, all that type of thing I think goes a long way. Mm-hmm. Especially when you're playing part time and you know, you're kinda you're used to being full time and that you're kinda used to high standards and stuff. So um I not definitely enjoyed it this year and you know, just need to see what happens but you know, I'd love to stay here next year and just see what happens. Yeah, Neely, what about you? Did like did you think at the start that it maybe would be a good kind of stepping stone to push back into the, the professional leagues or did you just was what is your main aim, like you said, I just want to play football and see what it takes me and did you find out anywhere during the season you thought, you know what, I can enjoy where I'm here now? Wanted to come and play. Hopefully, obviously, hopefully play well, but um, I think to add to that, it's been like enjoyable, and aye, uh, it's a good, good set of boys as well. So it's been very enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll kind of we'll move on to kind of how you're doing at the moment. Like, how's coronavirus kind of deal? Like, how are you having to deal with it? So, Neil, you're you're working. Has it stopped you working at all? Has it changed your kind of lifestyle with work, or has it just been kind of similar for you? Yeah, I have been out for three weeks now. Hey. Murder man, no <laughs> idea, but we're still getting paid in that, so hey. that's already obviously cut my bills. Um, <laughs> it's just me trying to not get bored, you know. Aye, but, what what you been up to trying to kind of to not get bored? What's your, what's your what have you been doing? Yeah, uh, just been uh, cycling, running. I take my mind to the show. <laughs> 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 but really, but yeah. it's the usual stuff, you know. But it's been all right. Aye, well, you must, obviously you're a student, so it's like maybe a wee bit different from you. Um, have you still been having work today, or has it been different? Uh, um, we've got kind of assignments up to the end of this month, so I've been sort of buried in that, to be fair, doing essays and that, but it's, it's actually all right. It keeps me busy. Right, aye. Um, so I, a lot of the uni stuff I do is online anyway, so it's not been affected too badly, to be fair. And I'm only in seconds right now, so there's no really any exam. That stuff. Mm. Get on with that and doing a bit of obviously try to keep my body ticking over, doing a bit of fitness stuff too. So mm. just try to get into a routine basically and wait until it all passes over. Right. I know it's just it's a strange time at the moment, and just obviously with leagues being decided, uh, basically, yeah, was, as we're recording today, it was yesterday that it was basically decided that you know, Park Thistle and other clubs were going to get relegated and teams were getting promoted. What's your thoughts on that? Neil, you're obviously at Partick, do you, do you kind of feel for the club a wee bit? Getting relegated uh, in those circumstances, or do you kind of think it's kind of what else? What else can kind of happen? It's hard to kind of choose. Uh, it's a bit harder. It's obviously sorry. I was sitting here saying it, but we're not the ones making the decisions away. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know because Partick had a game in hand here, didn't they? Because Aye. Queen play for something, so uh, they'll be feeling hard done by man. It's, I don't know. Uh, it's hard, eh? What were you, Mars? What, what was your thoughts on it? Try it. Both of you can try and show your colours when you are saying that you's, if you agree with the decision or not. <laughs> <laughs> Great decision, man. What a decision. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, it's one of the ones, isn't it? It's hard because I think whatever decision was made, there's always going to be kind of somebody upset or somebody annoyed about it. So, I wouldn't be the, be the one wanting to make the decision, but... Um, as you say as well, with the Lone League, I don't know what's going to happen there with promotion and relegation. Obviously, Kelty have been given the league, but I suppose they'd rather kind of get the chance to get promoted as well along with, alongside that. So, um, I see they're, they're talking about reconstruction as well, so I don't know if that will happen, but aye, it's a bit uh, it's just kind of one of these things, isn't it? You just need to adapt and nobody really seen it coming, so it's a hard one. I, I nearly see when you joined the Lone League, did you know how good the level was before you came down? Um, and do you think that it'd be really unfair to not have that chance for the Lone and Highland League teams to kind of push for promotion or get some kind of chance just after being in the league and seeing how, how good it is, how big the level is when you're down here? And it's, it's not just the Northern Leagues, it's kind of different, you know. Do you think the, the, the SPFL should look at that more? I, I think they definitely should, I because I think obviously. Uh, Kelty are deserved, deservedly winners, aren't they? So, um, God knows what will happen with that. Mm. But I think they should have the chance to get up, definitely, aye. Yeah. Uh, and it was a, I knew it was also a good league as well, because obviously mm. the teams and 
so many players that are in that as well. They played at a decent level, you know. So, aye, it was a good league. Yeah, do, you, do you find it different from, obviously you were a League 2 last year when you were at Stubborn Albion and Lone, do you think there's a kind of difference to the leagues at all? Because like, a lot of people maybe say that, that you find that it's more kind of competitive in the Lowland League uh, and compared to the League 2 when you're not fighting for the promotion. Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. I'd say yeah. both similar. Right. Like, uh, no, I'd say they're both very similar, aye. Mm. Uh, Marsh, you were in the Easter Scotland Leagues with uh, Bonus. Um, did you did you find a difference in a can I step up to the Lone League or did you did you did see their kind of like level kind of playing field the leagues? Um, I'd say it was to be fair a bit a step up. I'd say the style of football is definitely different in both leagues. Um, like the so Lone League, I think there's more football played. To be honest, when I was with Bonnes, you played a lot of teams kind of like, like Bonnie Rigo Obviously, were in the league last season, um, and the style of football was kind of different. Um, which myself I didn't really enjoy personally. Mm. Um, and some of the, some of the, no disrespect to some of the teams, but you'd go to some of the grounds and it'd be, do you know what I mean, really tight pitches and long grass and stuff like that. But you just need to kind of adapt to what you're, what you're playing against, really, to be honest. But I think there was a wee bit of a step up, and as Neely said, you only need to look at some of the players playing in the low and league um, and the level that they've played at to, yeah. to show how kind of how valued it is, I suppose now. So we'll move into a kind of quiz section now. So I've not told you guys beforehand what we're going to do, but do you remember back in September we did a kind of get to know you, like kind of teammate kind of question because you used to travel. So I picked three questions each that you get wrong. I'm going to tell you the answer you gave and see if you can remember what the actual right answer was, right? Okay. <laughs> anything about each other since the since the, the full year you together, okay? Right, so... Right. We'll start with you, Neil. So, the first question we asked then was, who did Marsh keep his first clean sheet against? And you said Bonnie Rig Rose. Do you remember what the answer is now? Is a Clyde? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Still rang, mate. Right, I'll give you one more guess. One more guess. Still rang. <laughs> who was it? I don't know. I don't know. I remember. Is it Joyston? <laughs> <laughs> no. No? What was it? Edinburgh City, wasn't it? Aye, aye for oh, the. Oh, that was it. Aki's 20s and the Iron Brew Cup. Aye, that was it. That's why I said Clyde, Clyde and St Johnston, mate. Right, Marsh. Yeah. You get this. I'll get it. Neil's first professional appearance. You get this wrong. You said St Johnston. Do you remember who it was against? Uh, 10 minutes. Mother. All right, there we go. Okay. Is it? Ma- Marsh is one nil up. Marsh remembers. <laughs> Marsh has probably watched this video about 10 times. Hello. Uh, Nearly, this is the one that you couldn't get right. Marsh's favourite artist at the time. We'll go for at the time. You said Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, completely different to what you said. Who was it? It was Drake, wasn't it? <laughs> no. No? Who is it? Your song. Yes. I'll give you a hint. He's got a very Italian sounding name, potentially. <laughs> You'll still not get that. Where's <laughs> Capaldi? <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> I knew you was going to say that. Who did you say, Marsh? Oh, Capaldi, yeah. How oh, was that? Yeah. I'm not getting you that because you took you three times. Shambles that. Just one now, Marsh. I've only, got, I've only went for three each. So, Marsh, I asked you what Neil's siblings, if you had any, were called. You got one yeah. right. Do you remember what the one to the right was? Uh, Melissa. And do you know Another what it was now? Stephanie. There we go. That's, that's a shambles. <laughs> Two in the <laughs> It's like most of these questions hard. Uh, the third one's really hard, so you you should be able to claw it back here, nearly. Marshy, what what brand of gloves does Marshy wear? Um, Neil, you said Ulrich, the the, the German goalkeeper, <laughs> <for Manchester. laughs> which isn't a brand. <laughs> oh. Do you remember what it's called? It's pretty. I'd say it's quite straightforward if you remember it. It's K something. It's. There's. I'll give you a clue. There's no K in any of the words. Three words. Three words. 
Glove is one of them, if that helps you. I'm not a keeper. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know. I get up. Get up. Marsh, what gloves do you wear? One glove company. They're cold. That is such a good bit company. That is terrible. <laughs> Why are you wearing them? I still carry catch a ball with them, mate. <laughs> I know that. Right, so Neil, you get zero once again for those questions. You'll need to brush up oh, there. Man, 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 man. <laughs> you call yourself my pal, man. You try to go. <laughs> uh, so, Marsh, your last one. This one's a bit, it's a bit different, but you said, how many goals did you say Mar- uh, Neil would get this season? How many goals do you remember him? Do you think he it was get? around? It was around 20, I think. No, it was 20 bang on. How many goals did he get was, in the league? Was it around 20? Um, how many goals in the, in the league? In the league, how many goals did he end up with? <sighs> did he beat Six, 16? No. Nah. nah. 15? 14, mate. 14. I'm not going to oh, guess his numbers. You can't, you can't guess his numbers. <laughs> ah, nah, I, I knew it was there or thereabout. Right, so, Marsh, you remember two? Two 0 easy. Two 0 again. So <laughs> I think I think Mark, you won the first time, Marsh. So nah, it's such gambles, man. Nearly you need brush up and start your knowledge, man. Ah, I need to brush up. I thought our school finished. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just barely drive anyway, man. Don't want to spend my money in petrol. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take Craig. You can take Dom, right? <laughs> in fact, now take Dom, I'll take Dom. You can take Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I didn't give you this before, but if you've listened to the podcast, you should uh, know these questions uh, beforehand. But I will try run through these kind of quickly. Um, so, what two players would you want to be isolated with? If you could be isolated with these players, Marsh, you go first. You picking goalkeepers? You picking outfield players? In the of the past, I. I past your idols looking up for anyone. Uh, right. So one I thought would be George Best. Right. Uh, just because I actually watched a documentary on him about a year ago and uh, I just think he'd have very good stories for his career basically and then the other one I thought of being a Celtic fan would be Tommy Burns Okay. obviously you hear the stories about him and kind of what a character he was so Aye. I think with they two you wouldn't kind of get bored of listening to them basically right, fair enough Neely you get two Uh <laughs> Probably Wayne Rooney. <laughs> you look like him, I think you look like him, don't you? I know, with my haircut, I know. Uh, no, I, I used to watch him when I was a wee boy. I used Aye. to have a strip for that, and I used to like him. Uh, who else? I think I'd maybe go with. I'd like to. Just really funny stories, isn't that? Tommy Gravison. Okay. I'd like to. Like, oh, I'd, 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 him, I'd like to just see what. Kind of went on behind the scenes and that, you know. <laughs> that's a that's a triple pair, that and you, Tommy Gravison and Wayne Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> no mean, much hair there, man. <laughs> that. Right, okay. Um, do you, if you can remember one game for the past, or maybe one you played in, uh, a recent game that you would watch over and over again because there's no life at all. Who are you choosing, Marsh? What game would you want? Uh, to are you going with your Celtic kind of view here? Or are you going elsewhere? I, I think I'm going to need to go with the Celtic view. Right. Uh, I think the one that sticks out in my mind actually quite recently would be when Celtic beat Rangers 5-1 at Ibrox. All right, okay. Uh, for, for obvious reasons. But I just remember uh, watching that game and that and going out with my pals and that after it. So it was a good day. So uh, I, that, that game would be, be one I wouldn't get tired of watching, I don't think. Aye. What were you, Neil? You, you kind of similar, you went a similar route, or you get something different? Uh, similar route. Um, I'd probably say. You went a lot this year. Ah, uh, wait. So I was going to say, obviously, the set two was my birthday, my twenty first birthday, and Celtic won two one. I went to Lazio and they didn't really seen it coming. Mm. Uh, but I'd say probably that's because I remember and that uh, was amazing. Right, go go with them. Uh, non football related ones. Um, so what? I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, Neil. I don't imagine you do a lot of cooking. But what would you cook if you could? Uh, you could cook one meal over the <laughs> isolation period. <laughs> uh, can you cook? Am I be, am I making a bad judgment here, or can you cook? No, I can't. No, I, can. <laughs> I can. I can. You can, right? I I probably cook 
tuna pasta. <laughs> tuna pasta, mate, okay. I like my tuna pasta. Not bad. I, that's, that'll do. Aye, that's a decent one. Marsh, what are you going for? Uh, I can cook a wee bit, to be fair. Um, if I had to eat something over and over again, I, I, I quite like steak pie. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> are you on the bed? <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you Sunday steak pie, aye? <laughs> aye, yeah, I like the kind of meals that a Sunday roast or a steak aye. pie or something like that. Go, go, big, go all out, you know, get one of the bigger meals. Aye. Right. Are you, are you making it? Somebody else making it for you? No, I'm cooking it. Aye, you're cooking it. Good luck, Marsh. <laughs> Right, uh, the last one was what TV show are you binging? It doesn't need to be one you're doing now, or it could be one you've done before and you've watched over and over again. Uh, Neil, you go first. What, what would you What would you choose to watch? If I could watch it again. Aye, uh, oh, anything, anything. What you been? What would you binge watch? Like continually, you could. Um, Sons of Anarchy. Right, Sons of Anarchy. Aye, it's a good one. It's long. That's Sons right. Anarchy, that was amazing. Aye. I literally, I literally just finished Sons of Anarchy last night. Aye. And that's my top three, man. It's unbelievable. Yeah, so really that's what I've been watching over the last two, two weeks. Right. So, uh, it's quality, man. Yeah, so, we'll kind of, we'll just kind of finish up. You can kind of sum up the kind of season, um, like how it's been for you personally, what you think it's been like for the team. So, like, Mars, how's, how's it been this year? And just, uh, is it just kind of, kind of good memories from you? Aye, overall, it's been really good. Um, I think we've shown as a team, sort of, with some of the results we've had, that we're capable of sort of beating the all the kind of the better teams in the league. So, albeit we've had some bad results in there as well, but I think obviously if we can get that consistency, then we'll be in a good place. But I think overall, obviously the club's made big strides towards sort of the development and stuff like that. So, um, I and it's been good. Obviously, the, the boys are great as well, and we all got on. So, now it's been a, a really positive experience. And uh, as I say, hoping it can continue into next season. Yeah, Neil, you just kind of echo what Mark says there. It's kind of similar from you. Well, I definitely. I think we just chill together. We've played well certain times this season. Sometimes, obviously, we've no, but I think that just comes to it, part and parcel. But um, I think it's been a overall good season. Obviously, it could have been better, but. Uh, I would just move on. Eh? What can I? What just I'll ask you a question. What game kind of stands out for both of you? Maybe one that maybe you played in well, or just one as a team. Uh, so, Mars, what what kind of game stands? Out? Is it the obvious ones like EK and Spartans away, or is there maybe a different one? Um, I think for me, I don't know. Maybe um, the seven two game against Civil. I think we kind of went on a bad run of games before that, mm-hmm. and I think every day. Everybody knew that we kind of had a result like that in us. So, and the, the way the kind of game went as well, we kind of were a bit unfortunate with a dodgy penalty decision, but they got it back to two each and then we responded well and, and battered them basically. Hmm. Neil scored a couple of goals. That <laughs> 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 changed. But no, nah, that would be the one that stands out for me, I think, just the way the game went and that, how we played. Uh, Neil, are you picking that one because you're hat trick or you you picked uh, it? I was going, but I can't really know. Mars just took it. Uh, I'd say the East Coast Bride game. Right. Because I think. Uh, that first time you guys the kind of bond of the team and you were going, you could go on and pick up results like that. Is that kind of uh, you saw that? I think that's kind of. I think East Coast Bride were kind of the. You said I think we played Kelly Hearts before then, but right. other than that, I think we were like another big team that we kind of played in. I think we just we battered off the kick off and I think that just even after the game I think it just brought everybody together and actually realised that we can beat the kind of teams, you know. Mm. And it was good. Right, so we'll finish up there guys, but cheers for coming on. It's been good chanties and getting some yeah. stories about Craigie. Uh but oh <laughs> finish up there guys. So just uh cheers to everyone listening and stay safe and stay home guys and that. Cheers, cheers. Stay safe.